You don't have to be afraid. God has great plans for you. The First Omen stars Nell Tiger Free, Nicole Saras, Ralph Incessant, and is directed by Arkasha Stevenson. And it's about Margaret, an American who is off to Rome to work for an orphanage before becoming a nun. But during her time, she uncovers a sinister plot by the Catholic Church to bring about the Antichrist. And uh, wait, hold on, let me let me double check something here. Am I just rereading my notes from Immaculate? No, 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 this is the First Omen, so... Oh, okay. It's not real, it's not real, it's not real. It's not real. Who said that? <laughs> you know, real quick, a funny thing, you know, and as I got out of this movie, I realized that I kind of completed a little devil trilogy here with my most recent reviews from the theater. You know, I had Immaculate, Late Night with the Devil, and now The Omen, so... Yes, Satan! But let me say, in my day, that I've seen a lot of remakes, I've seen a lot of sequels, I've seen a lot of requels, I've seen a lot of sidequels, and I can honestly say that The First Omen is one of the few exceptional ones out of the entire bunch. I love the atmosphere here. It's very ominous and just suffocating, but, I mean, given the subject matter, you would expect it to be. But normally, you know, in kind of uh, remakes or sequels, movies like these... That's not handled very well. It's just kind of surface level and you don't really take it that seriously. But big props here to the director, Akasha Stevenson, because I think she handles it very, very well. And especially considering that this is her first major motion picture. This is her film debut. And, and if you didn't tell me otherwise, I would have assumed this was a seasoned vet handling this. And her direction is great. It feels really old school and it uses a lot of old school techniques here and there. And one shot in particular that I absolutely love is there's a scene where Margaret is praying and when they pull back, you see a bunch of candles are lit and when they just pull back even further, the candles form like the eyes and the mouth of like a monster and she's caught like right in the middle. Like no matter what she's doing, She's just caught in the maw of the beast. And in a movie full of really good cinematography, that shot is the one that has probably stuck with me the most. I absolutely love it. Now, as you would expect, this movie is full of a lot of intense moments and also a lot of squeamish moments. And two of those squeamish moments come in the form of scenes where somebody is giving birth. In one of those scenes, they really don't shy away from showing you everything. And it's just, uh, uh, gah, like, uh, I just... Yeah, and the other towards the end is just, like, let's put it this way. I had to cross my legs multiple times during this, and I'm a guy, so I can't even imagine what this would feel like for a woman. The standout star of this is Nell Tiger Free. She gives one hell of a performance, and you can't take your eyes off her. She is really good in tender moments between her and Carlita, but she is also really great at the physical stuff too, especially during the possession pregnancy part of this movie. She runs the gamut of performance and is really, really good. How do you control people who no longer believe? You create something to fear. Now, even though I did really like this movie, there are certain things with it that I do need to address here. Now, the main plot of this movie is that during this time period, you had a lot of people that were moving away from the church. They chose not to believe, you know, it's the social uprising revolution during the 60s and the 70s. And the church sees this and they're concerned. So in order to get people to come back to the church and believe in God and believe in Jesus once again, they try to actively birth the Antichrist in order to get people to come back and believe the church. You don't have to be afraid. This child is his way. And this whole sort of insidious plot does feel kind of forced and you know, I know they got to connect it back to the original, you know, connecting little things here and there to make certain things in the original kind of make sense as to what possibly could have happened. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tired of the church is bad and evil sort of thing. And, you know, I know there's good and evil in every walk of life. You're going to have the good side of thing and the bad side of things. But I almost feel like now, like, man, 
The church is just an easy, easy punching bag. Plus, let me go back to what I alluded to at the beginning of this review and that the plot of this is very, very similar to Immaculate. You know, it probably wouldn't have even really crossed my mind had these two movies not been released so close to each other. Now, with that being said, even though I do like Immaculate, I think this movie, I think First Omen handles the subject matter. It's a little bit better. It's a little more sinister. It's, it's a lot more ominous. And I appreciate that they're not as ambiguous with what the goal of the church is, you know, what they're trying to do. In Immaculate, they left it kind of up to your interpretation. Do they know they're birthing the Antichrist or do they really believe they're birthing Christ himself? Here, the church knows, like, no, we're fucking birthing the son of Satan to get people to come back to church. So, yeah, it's kind of tomato, tomato. I appreciate ambiguity, but at the same time, I kind of appreciate them being so straightforward with it here. And the way this film ends, it's obvious sequel baiting. I mean, yes, there is a sequel to this. It is the original Omen, which came out years ago, but I'm talking about you know, one of these side quill things where they keep these main characters alive and they're going to do their own thing in adjacent to, you know, the original movie and maybe the sequels. I don't necessarily hate that, but in this instance, I think I would have preferred an ending that was just bleak and dark and just went right in to the original Omen with no real loose ends to tie up in terms of characters and little plot details now my other complaint and maybe one of you guys out there can help me understand this but it goes back to the plot what the church is trying to do now they need to birth the antichrist in order to drive people back to the church or at least that's what they're claiming but in this movie they already have a beast locked up like in a cell underneath the church it is a like demon devil i'm guessing it's like the legit devil jackal monster thing and i'm sitting there like wouldn't that be enough like why do you need to go through this whole hassle of impregnating a woman with the son of satan in order to get people back to the church why not parade this damn monster out there and be like look you all thought demons were fake here's this damn thing and yeah, come back to church. Jesus loves you. Maybe somebody out there can help make sense of this for me because that little part, I really didn't understand. It just didn't feel necessary. This child is his way. All right, kiddos, if you're looking for my recommendation on the first omen, here it is. Go out and see it. Now... The opening weekend for it wasn't great. It didn't do that well. I think it opened up at like number four. I highly recommend the movie. I think you all will enjoy it. If Even if you're on the fence, if you're like a longtime fan of The Omen, I do think you will get some sort of enjoyment out of this movie. Now, is it as good as the original? Uh, probably not, um, but I really liked it and I recommend going to see it while you still can. But anyways, those were my thoughts on the first Omen. If any of you guys out there have seen it, what were your thoughts? Please post them below. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Adios. Now, GTFO!